Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They've ranged from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. So this is a use of government data that will probably appeal to about eight people versus everyone in the world. Uh, so it won't tell you when the bus is going to come, but uh, it'll at least hopefully be, be interesting for a little bit. Um, you know, as Mike gets started here, like a lot of people, I've been following the news a lot more lately than, than I ever have in the past. And one of the things that you can't miss as you watch the news is this story of coalitions, you know, the Gang of Six, the Gang of Four, New England Republicans, and, and, and so on and so forth. And I was wondering, you know, is this a real story or is this just sort of fake? You know, is this something that pundits have cooked up and is there any data that you could get that would actually show and verify this? You know, so as I, as I was thinking about how would you model this, you can think about it as a graph where each senator represents a node in the graph, and the, the, the way that they vote together and the patterns that they vote together represent edges. So you say if they vote together more than 65% of the time, they're related. So you can see here, you, know, you would begin to get sort of patterns as how they're going to look, you know, how, how things are going to play out. So you know, thanks to the work of, of people like Josh, who have been compiling all this government data and making it available, you can go to sites like GovTrack and you can download um, you know, reams of stuff about, about government data. So this was, um, I used a site called GovTrack, which publishes everything in um, XML format. And so one of the pieces that you can get is basically a list of all the senators. This is a historical list of senators and representatives going back to John Adams. So you can go through there and see you know, every congressman who's been in the Senate identified by a unique ID. And then you can go through and get what are called roll call votes. And what that does is just say, you know, when, when each vote comes up, did the senator vote yay or did they vote nay? And you compile all those over the course of um, 600 Senate votes that happen uh, over the course of a legislative session. But then that's not quite enough. You have to then begin to calculate the affinities of between when do senators vote together. So what you do is you say, well, how many times did Senator A vote with Senator B? And you go through each of these files, and you just count them up and, and, and get a total. And then you divide it by the number of sessions, and that gives you your, your edges. So then you can take all that stuff, once you've got it kind of munged together, and stuff it into a program called DOT. And what DOT will do, or graph is, what, what graph is will do is turn that stuff into a picture. And that picture will look something like this. This is the social graph um, or the representation of the voting patterns for the 1991 US Senate session. So the first um, Bush presidency is in this period. So you can see very clear structure. There's two kind of big you know, groups. Um, the blue on the left are the Democrats. The red on the right are Republicans. Um, and in the middle, you can see sort of a dense network of, of cross-party voting. So th that represents sort of a, a good degree of bipartisanship that was happening at, at that period, or at least as a baseline. Um, this is actually the 1994. This is the Republican Revolution. So you can see here, you know, 900 votes over the session. Not anyone voted across party. Everybody sort of huddled together as sort of hedgehog defense. You know, just we're not going to vote for you. Um, and the year later, you can see um, this is the impeachment. Uh, uh, vote in the House of, um, of President Clinton. So you can see, again, the same structure sort of reemerges, but on the Democratic side, you notice a very distinct split where you can see you know, two sort of 50-50 groups. Um, on the Republican side, you see a, a, a large, but you know, a, a fairly large and cohesive core, but some people splitting off. So those people splitting off are Arlen Specter and Jim Jeffords, who will actually both change parties subsequently, which is kind of an interesting thing that this, that this reveals, the data reveals. This is the Senate impeachment trial. This, so this is when Rehnquist actually came in and, and, and was you know, presided over the Senate during this session. You can see it was the Republicans who split this time. Very interesting, one of the few times that that happens over, over the course of the 10 years. This is the, the graph during the period of um, September 11th. So you can see, you know, uh, again, it looks almost like 1991, a good bit of unity across parties, a lot of, you know, I think uh, uh, indications that things came together. This is um, the, the heck of a job period. This is the 109th session. This is, uh, incorporates Hurricane Katrina, the Tom DeLay scandals, uh, Jack Abramoff, a lot of these. You know, a lot, of, a lot of things happened in that period. The Republicans stayed very cohesive. The Democrats are split. This is the next session in which the Democrats 
took control back of the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate. So you can see here, again, a little bit of lack of structure in the Republican side, but some good, uh, very structured uh, on the Democratic side. This is the current state of the Senate social graph. So you can see it's a split about 50-50 for the Democrats. Um, the Republicans have a smaller core, but still very cohesive with more people splitting off. And you know, the question is, <laughs> What's interesting about this is, you know, these coalitions have always been true. It looks like the pundits are right. You know, it's backed up by data. You can go through. You can download this stuff yourself. You can run these graphs if, if anyone would ever want to. Um, but, you know, the thing is, that's always been true. You know, since 1796, Washington's farewell address warned us of factions and the problems of factions. It's as true then as it's, tr it's as true today as it was true then, you know, that basically it's not real news. It's old. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.